Hello students, welcome to ePathasala. I am Dr. Kalayarasi, serving as assistant professor in the Department of Textiles and Clothing, Amna Shingam Institute for Home Science and Higher Education for Women, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. Today, we will see an insight about eco-friendly finishing with enzymes. The textile wet processes are slowly shifted towards sustainable processes because of increasing governmental and environmental restrictions and decreasing availability of fresh water. Biocatalysis has proven to be a reliable and promising alternative for chemical processes. Enzymes are gaining importance in various textile wet processing and finishing processes. Enzymes are a very effective tool in providing eco-friendly solution to textile industry. They have replaced conventional textile processes which involve harsh chemicals, alkaline or acidic pH, high temperature and energy. The use of enzyme technology is attractive because enzymes are highly specific and efficient and work under mild conditions. Further, the use of enzymes results in reduced process time, energy and water savings, improved product quality and process integration. Different types of enzymes are used in various stages of textile processing. Cellulase enzyme is used for denim fading and biopolishing. Amylase enzyme is used for desizing of woven fabrics. For scouring and fiber extraction, pectinase enzyme is used and protease enzyme is used for the treatment of wool and silk. Lacases are used for the decolorization of dyes. The objective of the present module is to enable the students to know about the various applications of enzymes in textile processing, to understand the importance of eco-friendly textile processing. Enzymes are high molecular weight proteins that catalyze or increase the rate of the reaction without itself being changed. Enzymes are called as biocatalysts or biological catalysts as they are produced in all living cells of plants, animals and microorganisms. They are very specific in their action. The activity of the enzymes is influenced by pH, temperature, time, enzyme concentration, presence of activators and inhibitors. Now, let us see the advantages of using enzymes in textile processing. Enzymes require low energy. They are safe to handle. They are extremely specific in action and so quality of the fabric is not affected. They work under mild conditions. They are biodegradable and environment friendly and they produce high quality textile products. Enzymes are used in various textile processes such as desizing, scouring, bleaching, biopolishing, silk degumming, fiber extraction, denim fading and in decolorization of textile dye effluent. Hope you all know the conventional method of desizing. Today, let us see about enzymatic desizing or biodesizing. During the process of weaving, the warp yarn undergoes significant mechanical stress. To prevent the warp yarn from breaking, it is coated with gelatinous substances called as size and the process is called as sizing. For cotton or cotton blended fabrics, the warp yarns are mostly coated with starch, dextrins, polyvinyl alcohol, gelatin and carboxymethyl cellulose. Starch is a preferred over other sizing agents because of its flim forming capacity, low cost and easy availability. Due to sizing, the fabrics are not able to absorb water or any finishing agent. Hence, sizing agents must be removed after weaving process in order to make the fabric absorbent. The process of removal of starch or any other sizing agent is called as desizing. Conventional chemical desizing method uses oxidizing agents like hypochlorites or mild acids for longer time at high temperatures. It also consumes large amount of water. The conventional process results in degradation of cotton fiber thereby reducing the strength of the fabric. An alternative eco-friendly desizing method is the use of enzymes. The enzyme amylase is used for desizing. Amylase acts on starch and converts it to dextrins, 
maltose and finally to the glucose that can be easily removed by washing. The optimum pH required for desizing ranges from 5 to 7 and optimum temperature between 30 to 50 degrees centigrade. The fabric is treated with enzyme by padding or exhaustion methods. There are two types of amylases, alpha amylase and beta amylase. Alpha amylase cleaves starch molecules at random, whereas beta amylase successively removes the maltose units from the reducing ends. Alpha amylases are produced by bacteria, fungi and yeast. Bacterial and fungal alpha amylases are commonly used in industries. Wetting agents and non-ionic surfactants can be used to enhance enzyme penetration and adsorption, fiber swelling and removal of waxes and soils. Non-ionic surfactants are suitable for combination with enzymes, whereas anionic and cationic surfactant may inactivate the enzyme through denaturation. After the enzymatic treatment, fabrics should be washed at 80 degrees centigrade in alkaline liquor followed by a wash in neutral liquor. The advantages of biodesizing are, it is an eco-friendly process as it does not involve any chemicals. Amylase completely removes starch without damaging the fabric. They are highly specific in their action and safe to handle. The next process is enzymatic scouring or bioscouring. Gray fabric contains natural impurities like waxes, fats, pectins, proteins, organic acids, mineral salts and hemicelluloses in the primary cell wall and cuticle of the fiber. These impurities decrease the absorbency property of the fiber and prevent evenness in dyeing and preventing, printing. Hence, these impurities have to be removed. The process of removal of natural impurities is called as covering. Conventional scouring process uses strong alkalis like sodium hydroxide and the reaction takes place at high temperatures. These chemicals damages the fiber and results in loss of strength and weight. Due to high sodium hydroxide concentration, extensive washing and rinsing is required causing increased water consumption. The wastewater discharge is highly alkaline in nature and has high chemical oxygen demand that is COD and total dissolved solids that is TDS. Hence, the wastewater should be neutralized before discharge into the environment. The scouring process need to be improved to meet today's energy and environmental demands. Enzymatic scouring or bioscouring is an alternative eco-friendly method to alkaline scouring. This method uses enzymes which hydrolyze the non-cellulosic substances responsible for hydrophobicity of the fiber. A combination of enzymes including pectinase, protease, cellulase and lipase are used for bioscouring. Pectinases decompose pectin in the outer layers of the fiber. The weakened outer layer is removed by subsequent wash process. Protease degrades protein and lipase acts on natural waxes and fats. Wetting agents and non-ionic surfactants can be used to en enhance enzyme penetration and adsorption and removal of waxes and soils. The advantages of bioscovering are the strength and weight of the fabric is not affected. The process is performed at neutral pH. It consumes less water and increases the softness of fiber. It is an eco-friendly process as it does not involve any chemicals. Another fabric pretreatment pre process is bleaching. Bleaching is the process of removal of natural colorants from the fabric and make the fabric white in appearance. Bleaching is done after desizing and scouring, but before dyeing. Hydrogen peroxide is commonly used for bleaching. It is called as the universal bleaching agent. Bleaching with hydrogen peroxide is carried out at 90 to 100 degrees centigrade. 
high temperature and alkaline pH weakens the fibers. The hydrogen peroxide left after the process of bleaching is decomposed by reducing agents such as sodium thiosulfate or rinse out by water. The hydrogen peroxide left after bleaching has to be completely removed or else the oxidation effect makes the dyeing uneven. Nowadays, catalase enzyme is used which eliminates the need for reducing agents and also the usage of water is minimized. This results in discharge of less wastewater. Catalase enzymes belong to hydrolase class of enzymes. They are also called as hydroperoxidases. They are produced by several bacteria and fungi. They act at neutral pH and have optimum temperature at 20 to 50 degrees centigrade. Catalase enzyme is obtained from animal source. They decompose hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen. One molecule of catalase hydrolyzes 700 times its own weight of peroxide. Dyeing can be carried out in the same bath resulting in lower water consumption and waste water generation. Another enzyme used for bleaching is lacase. Lacase bring about whiteness of the fabric by oxidation of flavonoids. Lacases are isolated from the fungi Trematis hirsuta. Lacases are group of multi copper enzymes which oxidize both phenolic and non phenolic compounds. The fabric to be bleached is treated with lacase as a pre treatment step followed by peroxide bleaching to attain high levels of whiteness. The combination of chemical bleaching with enzyme cleanup action leads to less fiber damage and lower water consumption. The enzyme glucose oxidase releases hydrogen peroxide during breakdown of glucose. Hence, the process of desizing and bleaching can be carried out in a single bath which saves water and energy. One of the aesthetic finish given for denim fabric is fading. Denim, the universal fashion fabric is made of twill weave with indigo dyed warps. Uh, indigo dye adheres to the surface of the yarns. In conventional stone wash process, the faded effect of denim is brought about by washing the blue jeans with pumice stones. The stone wash effect is due to the removal of surface bound indigo dye and revealing the white interior of the yarn. The pumice stones damages the washer drum and results in the loss of fabric strength due to abrasion. Disadvantages of conventional method of denim fading. Pumice stones damages the machine and block the drainage system. It is difficult to remove pumice stone residues. They cause excessive damage to garments. The use of enzymes for denim fading is an environment friendly process that results in soft handle of the fabrics. The enzyme used for denim washing is cellulase. Cellulases are hydrolytic enzymes that cleave the cellulose molecule to small oligosaccharides. Cellulase partially hydrolyzes the cellulose present in the surface leaving the interior part of cotton fiber intact. Partial hydrolysis of the fiber surface removes indigo dye and results in lighter areas or faded effect and the process is known as bio stone washing. Cellulases are active at a temperature range of 30 to 60 degree centigrade and pH 6 to 7. A small amount of enzyme can replace several kilograms of pumice stones. Denim washing with cellulase is an eco-friendly process that results in good appearance and soft handle of fabrics. Fungal cellulase isolated from trichoderma resi is effective in producing a stone washed effect. Cellulase enzymes need to be inactivated after the desired stone wash effect is obtained. Insufficient inactivation will result in extended degradation of cellulose that leads to undesirable strength loss and weight reduction. Advantages of bio stone washing It requires 
shorter treatment time. It causes less damage to fabric and meshing. It releases less pumice dust in the environment. The next process that we are going to see is biopolishing. A ball or fuss emerging from the fabric is called a pill. Pills arise due to heavy processing of the fabric or garment. These pills reduce fabric quality as they result in an unattractive, naughty fabric appearance. Cellulase enzyme acts on the microfibers protruding from the surface and weaken it by degradation. On application of sufficient shear forces, the fiber will break from the surface and give the cotton fabrics a renewed smooth appearance. The process is called as biopolishing or depilling. The fabric after treatment with cellulase enzyme exhibit much lower pilling tendency. Enzymatic depilling is carried out after bleaching and desizing. Enzymatic treatment after dyeing may result in partial dye removal. Benefits of biopolishing They result in smoother and softer feel of fabric. Improve pilling resistance and color brightness of the fabric. They produce cleaner surface and increase the water retention property of the fabric. The next process that we are going to see is silk degumming. Silk fibers are composed of double filament of fibroin surrounded by a layer called sericin. Both sericin and fibroin are proteins. The process of removal of sericin, a protein that covers the silk filament is called as degumming. In conventional method, degumming is carried out in an alkaline solution containing soap which damages the protein fibroin. The use of specific proteolytic enzymes is preferred because they act only on sericin without attacking fibroin. Enzymatic degumming is performed using pepain, a cysteine protease. Pepain can be isolated from papaya fruit. The optimum pH for pepain ranges from 5.8 to 7 and temperature 50 to 57 degrees centigrade. The advantages are enzymatic silk degumming improve handle, smoothness and luster of the fabric. It retains the strength of silk filaments. Enzymatic treatment of wool. Untreated wool is hydrophobic in nature because of the presence of wax, grease and fatty acids in the epicutical surface. These hydrophobic impurities are removed by alkaline covering which uses harsh chemicals such as sodium carbonate. The conventional chemical method have certain drawbacks. It results in yellowing of fibers, poor handling quality, difficulties in dyeing and reduced durability of fabrics. They have adverse impact on environment. To protect the environment, Proteases are used as an alternative to harsh chemical treatment of wool. Enzymatic treatment of wool fibers with proteases improves shrink resistance, tensile strength, handle, softness, wettability and dye uptake. It also reduces the felting property of wool. Enzymatic process is preferred because it does not involve any harsh chemicals and it brings changes in the surface properties without affecting the interior part of the fiber. Transglutaminase, a thiol enzyme, is used for the treatment of wool fabric. Phasing up of the surface of woolen fabrics occurs during dyeing due to abrasive action. Enzymatic treatment with protease reduces phasing up and enhances the pilling performance of the fabrics thereby increasing the smoothness of the fabrics. The next process is shrink proofing of wool. Wool fibers have the tendency to felt during the wet processing steps. Felting of wool is due to the presence of scales or cuticles on the wool surface. Removal or modifications of these scales prevent felting. To prevent shrinkage, wool fibers are treated with oxidizers like potassium permanganate or sodium hypochlorite. 
chemicals such as halogen compounds used for the modification or removal of scales are environmentally harmful. The use of protein disulfate isomerase improves the shrinkage property of wool fabrics. Now, we will discuss about the applications of enzymes in detergent industry. Enzymes are used in detergent formulation. Due to increased environmental awareness, enzymes are used in detergent making since 1980s. The enzymes present in the detergents enhance the removal of soil particles by degrading them into simpler water soluble particles which can be easily washed off. Proteases that are stable at alkaline pH and having low temperature optimum are suitable for detergent applications. These proteases hydrolyze proteinaceous stains. Amylases are used to remove starch based stains that stick on textile fibers. Cellulases and lipases are included in detergents. Cellulases remove pills or fuzzy fibers on the surface of fabrics and liberate entrapped soil at disrupted fiber surfaces. The cleaning of fiber surfaces from soils and loss of microfibrils will give a brighter effect to fabrics and garments making it look renewed. It restores smoothness and luster. Lipases remove oil stains. It hydrolyzes ester bonds of fats thereby producing glycerol and fatty acids. The enzymes used in detergent manufacturing are isolated from microbes. At present, they are generated by recombinant techniques. Cutinases are extracellular esterases that hydrolyze ester bond in cutin, the structural poly polyester of plant cuticles. Cutinases also hydrolyze triacylglycerols as efficiently as lipases. Therefore, they are used in laundry industry and dishwashing detergents for removal of fats. Enzymes are also used in extraction of bast fibers. Bast fibers such as flax, hemp, jute, etc. consist of about 50% of cellulose, hemicellulose, pectins, fats, waxes and lignins. The bast fibers are extracted from the stem by a process called retting. Retting partially degrades the gummy substances that binds the fibers and helps in the extraction. In conventional process, the plants are spread on the grass field so as to enable the bacteria to act upon it in presence of moisture or the stem is immersed in slow rivers. In enzymatic process, enzymes such as hemicellulases and pectinases are used for the extraction of bast fibers. Advantages of enzymatic extraction Control degradation of fibers, hence fiber strength is not affected. Reduction in effluent generation Enzymes are not only used for treatment of natural fibers but can also be utilized for synthetic fibers. Surface modification of synthetic fibers About 50% of worldwide textile market is represented by synthetic fibers. Synthetic fibers such as polyethylene terephthalate that is PET, polyamide and polyacrylonitrile exhibit good tensile strength and resistance to chemicals, aberration and shrinkage. Main drawback of synthetic fiber is its hydrophobicity which makes the fiber uncomfortable to wear. Also, application of finishing and coloring agents is difficult as most of them are water dependent. Hence, crossing of the fiber requires absorbency property or hydrophilicity. In conventional method, sodium hydroxide is used to improve hydrophilic and flexural properties of the fibers. But these conventional chemical treatments have certain disadvantages. They are poor process control, loss of weight and strength of the fiber, yellowing of fibers. They require large amounts of chemicals and energy requirement is more. 
it is not an eco friendly process. Due to the drawbacks of chemical treatment, enzymes are used for the surface modification of synthetic fibers. Lipases and esterases are used for the bio modification of polyethylene tariff phthalate. The enzymatic hydrolysis resulted in increased hydrophilicity, affinity to dyes and deep pilling. Cutinase isolated from Fusarium solani acts on polyethylene tariff phthalate and polyamide fibers and increased its hydrophilic property and affinity towards dye. Decolorization of textile dye effluent. Lacases are extracellular multicopper enzymes that oxidize phenols, aromatic and non-aromatic compounds. Lacases are widely distributed in higher plants, fungi and bacteria. Lacases are used for the degradation of synthetic dyes as they can react with diverse structures. Decolorization by lacase is an environment friendly process. To conclude, the use of enzymes in textile industry is one of the most rapidly growing fields in industrial biotechnology. Enzyme technology can be used to develop a more environmental friendly and economically competitive process. Among the various textile processes, textile wet processing consumes high energy chemicals and water. Enzymes can be used for almost all textile wet processes as an alternative to harsh chemical treatment. Enzymes are used for various textile wet processes such as amylase for desizing, cellulase for biopolishing and denim fading, protease for wool and silk degumming. Further research is required for the bio modification of synthetic and natural fibers. Thermostable enzymes and the enzymes obtained from genetically modified microorganisms found applications in textile field in recent years. Utilization of enzymatic processes not only decreases the pollution load but also improves the quality of the products and the environment. Enzymatic process requires less energy, time and water. Hence, use of enzymes in textile bed processes is a solution to keep better environment for next generation.